Today's lesson is on trigonometry and area. Take a minute to read over the learning goal and scale. Find where you are on the scale before we begin the lesson. We can use trig to find the area of a regular polygon. In example one, we will find the area. What is the area of a regular nonagon with 10 centimeter sides? Since a nonagon has nine sides, the radii of the nonagon creates nine vertex angles. So the measure of one vertex angle will be 360 degrees divided by nine, or 40 degrees. The apothem divides the 40 degree vertex angles into two congruent 20 degree angles. It also divides one side into two congruent segments. So PS will have a length of 10 divided by two or five centimeters. We now have a right triangle with an angle measure of 20 degrees and a side length of five. Since we want to find the length of the apothem and we know the length of the side opposite the 20 degree angle, we can use trig. Since we know the length of the opposite side and we are looking for the length of the adjacent side, let's use the tangent ratio. We'll substitute 20 degrees in for theta, five in for the length of the opposite side, and a in for the length of the adjacent side. Since the variable's down low, we will switch places and divide. So the length of the apothem is approximately 13.7 centimeters. To find the perimeter, since there are nine sides in a nonagon and each side is 10 centimeters long, we'll take nine times 10 for 90 centimeters. Now let's use the formula to find the area of a regular polygon. Area equals the apothem times the perimeter divided by two. We'll substitute 13.7 in for the length of the apothem and 90 in for the perimeter. 13.7 times 90 is 1,233 and divided by two, the area of the regular nonagon is approximately 616.5 centimeters squared. Pause the video and do you try number one. What is the area of a regular pentagon with four inch sides? Round your answer to the nearest tenth. Let's start with the formula for the area of a regular polygon. Area equals the apothem times the perimeter divided by two. Since a pentagon has five sides and each side is four inches long, to find the perimeter, we'll take five times four and get 20 inches. To find the apothem, we're going to have to use trig. We know that a pentagon is going to have five congruent isosceles triangles. Each of these angles will be one-fifth of 360 degrees. So this vertex angle will be 360 divided by five, or 72 degrees. Drawing in the apothem, we'll divide the 72 degree vertex angle into two congruent 36 degree angles. It will also divide the four inch side into two congruent two inch sides. Since we have a right triangle and we know this angle is 36 degrees and we know the length of the side opposite is two, we can use a trig ratio to find the length of the apothem. Since this side is the side opposite our 36 degree angle and this is our adjacent side, we'll use the tangent ratio. We'll substitute 36 degrees in for theta, two in for the length of the opposite side, and a in for the length of the adjacent side. Since the variable is in the denominator, the variable and tangent 36 will switch places and will divide. So the length of the apothem is two divided by tangent 36, or approximately 2.8 inches. Let's substitute 2.8 in our equation for the length of the apothem and 20 in for the length of our perimeter. Remember, this number is rounded, so I'm going to leave what I got when I put 2 divided by tangent 36 on the calculator. I'm going to leave that there, and I'm just going to hit times 20. That will give me approximately 55.1. Divide that by 2 and we'll get an area of approximately 
inches squared. If you round and put 2.8 times 20 in the calculator, your answer will come out to be about 28 inches. Close, but not exactly the same. So be careful. In example two, we will find area. A stop sign is a regular octagon. The standard size has a 16.2 inch radius. What is the area of the stop sign to the nearest square inch? Let's start with the formula for the area of a regular polygon. Area equals the apothem times the perimeter divided by two. The 16.2 inch radii will give us eight congruent isosceles triangles with vertex angles that have a measure of 360 divided by eight or 45 degrees. The apothem will divide that 45 degree angle into two congruent 22.5 degree angles. We now have a right triangle with a 22.5 degree angle and a 16.2 inch hypotenuse. Let's use trig to find the length of the apothem and this side which is half of a side length of the octagon. This will be the side opposite our 22.5 degree angle and our apothem will be the adjacent side. Since we know the length of the hypotenuse and we're looking for the opposite side, let's use sine. We'll substitute 22.5 in for theta and 16.2 in for the length of the hypotenuse. Since the variable is up high, we will multiply here. So sine of 22.5 times 16.2 will give us approximately 6.2. Since this length is half the length of the side of an octagon, we're going to take 6.2, multiply it by 2 to get the whole side length. So the length of each side of the octagon will be approximately 12.4. To find the perimeter, since each side length is 12.4 and there are 8 sides, we'll multiply 12.4 times 8 for 99.2 inches. To find the length of the apothem, we're going to have to use cosine since we know the length of the hypotenuse and we're looking for the length of the adjacent side. We'll substitute 22.5 in for theta and 16.2 in for the length of the hypotenuse. Since the variable's up high, we will multiply cosine 22.5 times 16.2 for an apothem that is approximately 14.97 inches. Now that we know the length of our apothem and our perimeter, let's substitute them into our formula. 14.97 times 99.2 is 1,485 inches. Divided by 2 is 742.5 square inches. Rounded to the nearest square inch, that's approximately 743 square inches. Pause the video and do you try number 2. A tabletop has the shape of a regular decagon with a radius of 9.5 inches. What is the area of the tabletop to the nearest square inch? Let's start with the formula to find the area of a regular polygon. Area equals the apothem times the perimeter divided by 2. In a regular decagon, we will have 10 congruent isosceles triangles with each vertex angle having a measure of 360 divided by 10 or 36 degrees. Drawing in an apothem will give us a right triangle with an angle that is half 36 degrees or 18 degrees. Since the radius of the decagon is 9.5 inches, the hypotenuse of our right triangle is 9.5 inches. We need to find the apothem for our formula, which is the adjacent side of our right triangle. Since we're looking for the length of our adjacent side and we know the length of the hypotenuse, let's use cosine to find the length of the apothem. Since the variable is in the numerator, we will multiply cosine 18 times 9.5 for an apothem that is approximately 9.04 inches long. Since the length of one side of our decagon is twice the length of the opposite side of our triangle, we need to find the length of the opposite side in order to find the length of one side of the decagon. Since we're looking for the opposite side length and we know the length of the hypotenuse, let's use sine. 
Since our variable is in the numerator, we're going to multiply sine 18 times 9.5 for a length of approximately 2.94 inches. Since our side length is twice as long as the length of our opposite side, we're going to multiply 2 times 2.94 for a length of 5.88 inches. Since there are 10 sides in our decagon and each side is 5.88 inches, the perimeter will be 10 times 5.88 or 58.8. Now let's substitute 9.04 in for the length of our apothem and 58.8 in for the perimeter. 9.04 times 58.8 is 531.552. Divide that by 2 for an area of approximately 265.8 square inches. Rounded to the nearest square inch, we will have 266 square inches. For part B, suppose the radius of a regular polygon is doubled. How does the area of the polygon change? Explain. Remember in part A, our area was approximately 266 inches squared. Now let's find the area of our new decagon with side lengths of 9.5 times 2 or 18 inches. Since our decagon has the same vertex angle of 36 degrees, our new right triangle will have the same angle of 18 degrees. But our radius is now 19. Let's find the length of the apothem by using cosine. Now let's use sine to find the length of the opposite side. Remember, the length of a side of the regular decagon is going to be twice the length of the opposite side of this right triangle, so 2 times 5.87, approximately 11.74. So our apothem is 18.07, and the perimeter is 11.74 times 10 sides, or 117.4. Now let's find the area of our regular decagon by substituting 18.07 in for the apothem and 117.4 in for the perimeter, which is approximately 1,061 square inches. Our first area was approximately 266 inches squared, and our second area, when we doubled the length of our radius, is approximately 1,061 inches squared. This area is almost four times as big as this area. We can use trigonometry to find the area of a triangle when we know the length of two sides and the measure of the included angle. Theorem 10-8 gives us the formula to find the area of a triangle given side angle side. The area of a triangle is half the product of the lengths of the two sides times the sine of the included angle. or B, C times sine of angle A divided by 2. In example 3, we will find area. What is the area of the triangle? Since we have side angle side, we're going to take the product of the two sides, 21 times 12, times sine of the included angle divided by 2. That's 187.27 divided by 2 which is approximately 93.6 centimeters squared. Pause the video and do you try number three. What is the area of the triangle? Round your answer to the nearest square inch. Since we have side, angle, side, we're going to multiply the length of the two sides by sine of the included angle and divide that by two. That will give us about 89.47 divided by 2. So rounded to the nearest square inch, we will have approximately 45 inches squared. Now's your chance to see how well you understand the lesson. Pause the video and do the lesson check. Don't forget to check your answers on the next slide. If you have any questions regarding the lesson check, be sure to ask me in class. Now that you completely understand, go ahead and give the challenge a shot. Now take another minute to reread the learning goal and scale. Have you climbed any higher on the scale since where you were before we began the lesson? Here's the answer to the challenge question.